Hey everyone, today's video recap will be one of the most trending and awaited war film of 2022. It is, All Quiet on the Western Front. It is a German drama war film coordinated by Edward Berger, recounts the tale of a time span when humankind was getting to know the sort of obliteration it could do. It recounts the account of the scandalous peace negotiation of Compiègne, where the Germans gave up, informally, to the French in the year 1918. Be that as it may, all quiet on the Western Front, isn't about war. There's really no need to focus on patriotism. It is about the acknowledgement that a warrior goes through while he remains on the bleeding edge and faces the projectiles of the foe powers. The screenplay has been adjusted from a novel composed by Eric Maria Remark. It stars Daniel Brühl, Albrecht Schuck, Sebastian Hulk, Felix Kammerer, Aaron Hilmer, Eden Hasanovic, and David Stryaso. This was a brief introduction to film and now let's begin to dive into the plot and enjoy watching. Likes and subscriptions are highly appreciated. It was the third year of the First World War. Without precedent for the historical backdrop of fighting, tanks, compound weapons, gas bombs, discharge overcoats, and close quarters conflict strategies were being utilized. Humanity had never seen anything so destroyed. At that point, German, Italian, and Hungarian powers were battling against the coalition known as the Triple Entente, which included extraordinary England, France, and Russia. On the western front of the German-French line, when one cluster of troopers kicked the bucket, the garbs and different utilities were taken from their cadavers and sent back, where they were washed, sewed, and prepared to be worn once more. Such was the worth of life. If by some stroke of good luck Paul Baumer and others had realized about this misfortune prior to joining the powers, the situation would have been different for Paul had manufactured the mark of his mom to be a piece of the military and battle the battle for his homeland. However, much to his dismay that he had marked his own destruction, and moving ahead was the only real option. It was the spring of 1917 when four youthful chaps, Paul Baumer, Albert Kropp, Fraz Bem Muller, and Ludwig Bem, chose to enlist in the military. The pioneers came and gave a helpful discourse. They let the youthful recruits know how the conflict would impart dread and uncertainty to them. They expressed that on the front line, one can't stand to be intellectually frail. They talked about nationalism, and they talked about a radiant future. They talked about uprightness when all they were doing was diluting youthful personalities. The inspirational words expressed by the pioneers were only a demonstration of unfairness. They had been fruitful in programming a whole age. They caused them to accept that it was to their greatest advantage that the conflict was being battled. The satisfaction that Paul had while gathering his uniform didn't keep going long. He was made conscious of the ground real factors when he arrived at the Western Front. Paul met Stanislaus Kaczynski down and dirty. Paul was shocked to see the condition of the troopers down and dirty. We came to know that the little fellows had no battle abilities. They were not given any kind of preparing because of an absence of time. They were sent straightforwardly to the war zone to battle the French. Interestingly, Paul understood the significance of the order, begin gathering, which they heard regularly down and dirty. It implied that the identifications of every one of the people who had passed on must be gathered from their carcasses to perhaps keep a count and keep a record of the dead. Paul found the scenes of his companion Ludwig lying down and dirty, and afterward close to that, he tracked down his dead body. That was Paul's most memorable experience with death. Passing was a regular guest in those channels. Paul was posted in Champagne, a French-involved region after that. There was consistently a shortage of food down and dirty. Once, Paul and Kaczynski took a goose from a French rancher's home. That day, when they were eating up their piece of meat along with Jaden, Crops, and others, it seemed like their concerns at this point not existed. They presumably ate appropriately after ages. Aside from food, even females and new bed sheets and garments were a welcome sight. Kaczynski didn't have the foggiest idea how to peruse. Paul read his letters. 
While the officers were battling the conflict, their families were attempting to procure their vocations. Life had taken a difficulty in Germany, at this point the glad and egotistical pioneers were not prepared to yield. They thought it was a demonstration of mental fortitude to continue battling and putting the existences of the warriors in question. Kaczynski's child had kicked the bucket, and he had created some distance from his loved ones. Frequently, he had an inclination that perhaps he could always be unable to return, even once the conflict was finished. He knew that subsequent to seeing such a lot of carnage thus much mercilessness, he could always be unable to carry on with a typical life. Paul, Kaczynski, Krops, Jaden, and others were shipped off search for 60 youthful volunteers who had been absent since the other day. Each man and each warrior was important to the German government, not on the grounds that they esteemed their lives, but since they were at that point running low on labor and assets. The general was given the day-to-day -day report by Major von Brixdorf, perhaps of his most confided in man. The general was of the assessment that the social leftists would bring the destruction of humanity. However, he had requested the German designation, under Matthias Erzberger, to go to Compiègne to go into a ceasefire with the French, he in no way wanted to sign a truce. He needed to continue to battle, as his misleading pride was too perfect to even think about giving up. He was prepared to forfeit every single trooper to battle for his own advantages. The general said that the existence of a fighter has no importance without war. In any case, nor was he a genuine officer, nor was he battling the conflict himself. Matthias Erzberger, however, dislikes that. He had lost a child, and he knew the ridiculousness of what the Germans were requesting their warriors to do. He was attempting to persuade the French and the Germans to come to an understanding. He realizes that the agreements that the French had proposed were not doable, yet he was all the while able to stop every one of the threats. He didn't maintain that more officers should lose their lives. The famished German troopers battled their direction through. They didn't have a very remarkable decision. The elements were extremely basic, kill or wind up dead. Paul stalled out in one of the holes with another French fighter. He cut the French fighter barbarously as though he was moved by unequipped for understanding what he was doing. Yet, when some thought one, he understood that he had nearly killed a man. He began to recuperate his injuries, however it was past the point of no return. Paul understood that it was not his conflict. He had no excuse to kill a blameless man whom he was meeting without precedent for his lifetime. He realizes that he was only a celebrated hired soldier who had been provided a misguided feeling of motivation. The ceasefire of Compiègne was endorsed on November 11, 1918, and it was concluded that there would be a truce at precisely 11 a.m. Crops didn't endure the conflict, and Jaden ended it all since he would have rather not carried on with his life as an incapacitated individual. Paul and Kaczynski were still there. They were the fortunate ones, as Kaczynski told Paul. They couldn't see as any significance in the conflict they had battled. They lamented the deficiency of those with whom they once chuckled and shared bread. Yet, presently it seemed like the bad dreams would at long last evaporate. Once more they chose to take a goose from that equivalent French rancher. Paul headed inside, however the rancher's little child locked him inside the horse shelter. Paul figured out how to emerge and he advised Kaczynski to make a quickly make tracks. The rancher's child made up for lost time and shot Kaczynski. It felt silly. A man who had endured the fiercest skirmish, everything being equal, couldn't endure the disdain that a young man was conveying inside himself. The pioneers had the option to sow the seeds of retribution effectively, the impacts of which were seen in 1939 when a person brandishing a toothbrush mustache and holding on to that equivalent disdain inside him chose to consume the world. However, the general was as yet not done. He requested the fighters to conflict with the truce and assault Ladier, as there was in fact still some time left for the ceasefire to produce results. Paul wasn't as fortunate this time. He was unable to endure the fury of war. Another youthful select, very much like him, 
gathered every one of the identifications. Paul had kicked the bucket saving the existence of that young man, trusting that one day he would comprehend that there was nothing more useless than doing battle. Paul was a pragmatist. He never trusted that he would one day achieve magnificence for kicking the bucket for his mother country. He only expected a superior world. Yet, unfortunately, till men with swelled inner selves and expanded confidence held the reins, a simply world would have been a simple invention of creative mind. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and please don't forget to like the videos and subscribe to my channel for more videos and updates.